I'm Larry Walther and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com Chapter 4. In this module we will consider classified balance sheets. Classified balance sheet is simply a balance sheet that organizes assets according to categories or classes. We'll look at these in detail as we proceed forward. Before we begin with the specifics, however, consider that one needs to consider how assets are valued in a balance sheet. Some assets are valued at historical cost, some at net realizable value, some at market value or fair value. Uh, other assets are not carried in a balance sheet at all. Uh, certain internally developed intangibles, for example, may not have a value that's reflected on a particular balance sheet. So while a balance sheet is an important tool and, a, and, a, and an essential part of evaluating a company's financial position, one needs to be cognizant of its, its strengths and limitations in terms of what all is capable of being presented within the balance sheet. So now moving to the classifications in a classified balance sheet, uh, thinking first about assets. We have five major categories uh, for assets. The first of these is current assets. Current assets, by definition, are cash and those assets that will be converted into cash or consumed within one year of the operating cycle, whichever is longer. The normal test is one year. For some businesses, it may be longer than a year. The operating cycle is the amount of time that it takes a business to turn cash back into cash. A business might take cash and buy inventory and then sell inventory and accept a receivable and then eventually collect the receivable. The length of time it takes to do that is the operating cycle. Now for most businesses that's a very short period of time or a relatively short period of time. There are some industries where that operating cycle could extend beyond a year. A furniture manufacturer may need to age its wood for two or three or five years before it can convert it into a finished product. That inventory would be considered a current asset the inventory because it's within the operating cycle. All right? But if we go to the normal case where operating cycle is less than one year, uh, uh, then one year is the test for determining whether something is current or not. That is, will it be con converted to cash or consumed within one year in that case? So that would ordinarily include cash, accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses that span less than one year, supplies that would be used up within one year, things of this nature would be the normal current assets. Long-term investments is the second major category I would have you to consider on a classified balance sheet. It's uh, where we would report investments in other companies, uh, land that's held for speculation or at least land that's not in productive use of the business, uh, funds that might be set aside for future plant expansion. Uh, there's any number of potential items that could pop up in the long-term investments category. Property, plant, and equipment is the third major category of assets on the classified balance sheet. These are assets with long lives that are used in the productive process, such as land, buildings, and equipment. That's followed by intangible assets. Some businesses will hold intangible assets that they've purchased, such as patents or, or uh, a copyright, for example. Beyond that, though, there's also uh, unique intangible assets. When one business buys another, they may pay a premium price for that business. We'll cover this more in a later chapter, but that premium is referred to as goodwill. It would be reported as an intangible asset on the balance sheet. Uh, finally, the last category, which oftentimes may not be encountered at all, but is a fifth appropriate category, is other assets. Appropriate for things, things that simply don't fit somewhere else on the balance sheet. Uh, receivables from employees, long-term receivables, things of that nature. Now let's turn to the other side of the balance sheet, the liability side. The first category we would encounter in liabilities are current liabilities. These are obligations that generally would be expected to be liquidated within one year, but it also ties to or longer if the operating cycle is longer than one year. In addition, current liabilities are normally paid out of current assets. So this would include accounts payable, salaries payable, taxes payable, interest payable, things of that nature, short-term loans payable. If we look at the long-term liabilities, these are obligations that aren't due in the next year. They might be uh, notes payable to a bank on a long-term loan, uh, mortgage notes, deferred taxes, any number of categories. Importantly, in thinking about those items, though, some liabilities, uh, like, uh, say, a, a note, uh, a five-year note, maybe one-fifth of that is due in the first year, and the other remaining portion is due in subsequent years. Those we would actually need to separate into two components. The part that's current would go in the current liability section, and the part that's due in more than one year would go in the non-current liability section. 
the last category or last section of the balance sheet is the equity section and the, the categorization or what you would expect to see in the equity section would depend on the nature of the entity. Now in this book I'm fairly well always assuming a corporate entity and so we would have capital stock, the amounts received from investors at the time the stock of the company was issued, uh, the investors are the owners, their ownership is represented by transferable shares. The other category we would expect to see certainly is retained earnings. It's the excess of a corporate's income over its dividends distributed, profit that's been retained in the business. So those are two key categories you would see in the equity section of the balance sheet. Now here's an example of a classified balance sheet for Classy Company. And here you see the current assets section followed by long-term investments, followed by property, plant and equipment, followed by the intangible assets, finally the other assets. Then the liability section, we have the current liabilities, we have the long-term liabilities, and finally the equity section for this particular entity. The equity section could look entirely different for a partnership or a sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship might have a single capital account that reflects amounts invested as well as amounts earned that have not been distributed. A partnership would have a similar presentation but likely an account or a capital account for each particular partner. No matter, uh, there's a principle of full disclosure that holds that financial statements result in a fair presentation. All relevant facts that would influence investor and creditor judgments about the company are disclosed in the financial statements or the related notes. So there's simply some things that a balance sheet may not be capable of properly displaying. For example, the effect of a pending lawsuit or potential major business transaction that's forthcoming, something of this nature. Uh, as appropriate, a company should make full disclosure of that information, uh, augment the balance sheet and the other financial statements with appropriate footnotes.